China reverses zero COVID. Xi Jinping meets with the former Russian leader to talk about Ukraine. And Hong Kong pushes national education for adults. That and more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by PC Doctor Drive Erase. Erasing hard drives shouldn't be difficult, neither should pricing, licensing, and use. Securely and easily erase all kinds of drives with PC Doctor Drive Erase, all starting under $60. COVID is getting really bad in China. And what better way to deal with it than telling people to get back to work? The Chinese Communist Party has a glorious history of completely reversing major policies, purely for political reasons. Like Mao saying, kill the landlords, and then Deng Xiaoping saying, let people get rich. These days, the zero COVID policy is a lot like that. The Communist Party has made a complete U-turn on zero COVID. The propaganda machine is now saying, <laughs> we're not fighting a war with COVID. You're fine. Get back to work. Seriously, get back to work. Some employers are even giving priority to people who had tested positive for COVID on the grounds that they probably got natural immunity now. This is big Oceania has always been at war with East Asia energy. The reason for the reversal, of course, has nothing to do with medical science. It's that the Chinese economy had been tanking, what with so many things being locked down. The Chinese Communist Party can't make money if the workers don't return to the factories. But there's a problem. People are dying. China's crematoriums are packed as COVID cases soar. One crematorium worker in Chongqing told AFP that they'd run out of space to put dead bodies. AFP asked workers at several crematoriums and funeral parlors if they thought this was related to COVID. But their responses were cagey, unsurprising in a country where no one trusts the government, but no one wants to go on record telling the truth either. One worker said, it's three or four times busier than in previous years. When pressed, another crematorium worker said, we are not sure if it's related to COVID. You need to ask the leaders in charge. And a third one said, what do you think? I think that last guy is from Brooklyn. Some estimates suggest that more than a million people in China could die from COVID now. I'll have a lot more on that in tomorrow's episode of China Uncensored, so stay tuned. There's also another widespread problem. Three years of COVID lockdowns in China have taken an enormous mental toll on China's 1.4 billion citizens. A lot of Chinese people are experiencing anxiety, depression, and insomnia. And according to one estimate, as many as 20% of health workers, patients, and members of the public may be suffering from PTSD. A lot of people are now asking what the point of all that was. For this, we supported all those crazy lockdowns halting of production and business that resulted in bankruptcies, suicides, and fires, they ignore the humanitarian disasters for the so-called sacrifice for the greater good. Can the victims now ask, what for? No, the victims can't ask, what for? Or, okay, technically they can, but they'll just get censored. But the Chinese Communist Party has moved on to bigger and more pressing issues than people's health, like interfering in other countries' internal affairs. This week, Russia's former president, Dmitry Medvedev, met with Xi Jinping to talk about the war in Ukraine. I mean, the um, special military operation, not a war. I assume the two of them had a nice, friendly chat about how to get around U.S. sanctions. Officially, Xi Jinping told Medvedev that China wants to lead peace talks on Ukraine. That is, China wants Western countries to look to China as the intermediary. That could work if Western governments are stupid. I actually predicted this right after Russia invaded Ukraine, that the Chinese Communist Party would try to make Russia into North Korea and position China as the only country that can talk sense into them. So other countries have to work with China. Speaking of working with China, Medvedev also said they talked about China and Russia's no limits strategic partnership. It's always nice to see allies coming together during the holidays. Speaking of Russia and China uniting for the common good, this week, they held joint military exercises near Japan. The exercises featured a Russian cruiser and frigate, two Chinese destroyers, and a submarine, among other Navy craft. 
The purpose of the exercises was obviously to strengthen military cooperation between the two countries and promote peace. And after the break, there's lots of great reasons to put money into China, if you ignore all the warning signs. Welcome back. You know who's stupid? Everyone who thinks it's a good idea to put money in China right now. Well, good news for those idiots. Investments are set to flow back into China because U.S. regulators have worked out a deal that would finally allow them to audit Chinese companies listed on the U.S. stock market. Now you might be thinking, wait, the U.S. hadn't been allowed to audit Chinese companies listed on the U.S. stock market? And those companies were still listed on the U.S. stock market for years? Yes. The Chinese regime had classified Chinese companies' financials as state secrets to prevent them from being audited. The U.S. asked if they could inspect, pretty please, but the answer was always no. And the U.S. government didn't want to rock the boat to avoid losing all that money. Even after one Chinese company faked more than $300 million in sales, which they were able to do because they didn't allow U.S. regulators to audit them. U.S. regulators weren't able to fix the fundamental problem, at least until this year. Under a new deal reached after years of negotiation, Chinese companies have agreed to meet the same standards as every other company that lists on the U.S. stock exchange and show U.S. regulators their books to make sure there's no fraud. The Chinese regime finally agreed to this because the U.S. threatened to actually kick hundreds of those Chinese companies off the U.S. stock markets, which the Chinese Communist Party doesn't actually want to happen. Clearly, China responded to a serious show of force more than they did to a pretty please. And that is a lesson the U.S. government probably won't apply to anything else involving China. Speaking of stupid places to put your money, earlier this week I tweeted a link to a very unwise Market Watch opinion article about what Chinese stocks to buy, adding the caption, QUICK PUMP MORE MONEY INTO CHINA. Now to be clear, that was sarcastic. Fortunately, Winston from the Serpenzetta YouTube channel picked up on this all-cap sarcasm, and he replied, tweeting, These stock bros need to go jump in a lake. Which, apparently, is not a thing you're allowed to say on Twitter. Twitter forced him to delete that tweet and also suspended him from Twitter for 11 hours. Why? It supposedly violated their policy against self-harm. What's scary here is that it probably had nothing to do with what he wrote which was pretty mild. It was more likely the result of pro-Beijing people mass flagging that tweet. And in this case, using mass flagging is basically a cultural revolution style mechanism where if enough people criticize you, whether you're right or wrong, you can get into serious trouble. That's scary for anyone who supports free speech. And getting suspended over this tweet? That's ridiculous. Because when you get too hot for Chinese investment, jumping in a lake is actually a pleasant way to cool off. Speaking of people who love Chinese money, the BBC, UK's state-run media. Well, it turns out the BBC has been making huge profits producing glossy tourism ads for China's propaganda machine. The BBC has a non-news commercial arm called StoryWorks. StoryWorks makes branded content for companies around the world. Basically, it produces high-end commercials for them. Well, an investigation by Deadline reveals that BBC StoryWorks has partnered with at least 18 Chinese clients, including nine state-affiliated bodies. One of those state-affiliated bodies is CGTN, which was kicked out of the UK nearly two years ago for broadcasting propaganda. Another one of StoryWorks' partners was Huawei, the Chinese telecom company with links to the Chinese military. Huawei is being banned from the UK over serious security concerns. And yet, CGTN and Huawei have been two of StoryWorks' consistent partners. Meanwhile, StoryWorks leans on BBC News' reputation for impartiality and trustworthiness in order to get clients. And after the break, Hong Kong is feeling very patriotic. At least the government is. Welcome back. Hong Kong's chief executive John Lee has said Beijing is concerned about allowing foreign lawyers to represent Hong Kongers in cases involving national security, which might sound reasonable in a different context. I mean, national security, right? But in Hong Kong's case, publishing a newspaper criticizing the Chinese Communist Party is considered a national security threat, 
with serious prison time. That's what's happening to Jimmy Lai, the founder of Apple Daily. His trial has been delayed because even though the court allowed him to use a British lawyer, the immigration department refused to grant that lawyer a visa extension, forcing him to leave. And now Beijing is saying, see, that's why it's a bad idea to allow foreign lawyers in national security cases. Speaking of Hong Kong, the government has unveiled a youth development blueprint. It contains 160 initiatives, things like providing affordable apartments and increasing internship opportunities, which sounds pretty good. So what's the horrible catch? Well, the official in charge said, we will ramp up the sense of belonging to the country and Hong Kong among the youth, while making sure they have a thorough understanding of the Chinese constitution and basic law. Let me translate that into normal language. It means this program will force Hong Kong's youth to be good little Chinese nationalists, or else they get nothing. That was just the latest in a string of campaigns to mold the thinking of Hong Kongers. This past July, the Hong Kong government began to implement patriotic education for school children. In August, they told teachers to study Xi Jinping's latest speech about Hong Kong and read it to students. And this month, the Hong Kong government is saying even parents need to receive national education. According to new guidelines, parents in Hong Kong now have to join at least one activity every year organized by their kids' school related to national education. Not sure if that's a good idea, though. It means that once a year, parents will understand exactly what kind of brainwashing their children are subjected to every day. Back in 2012, the Hong Kong government had tried to force national education on students, and tens of thousands of people came out to protest. In response, the government backed down. But you won't see Hong Kongers protesting like that anymore, because now, under the new national security law, the Hong Kong government will throw you in prison for protesting. Problem solved. And this episode is sponsored by PC Doctor Drive Erase. There are lots of reasons why you might want to erase a hard drive. When you recycle an old computer, before you send it in for repair, or if you're concerned that your friendly neighborhood Communist Party representatives are about to stop by for a cup of tea. Erasing drives should be easy. That's why PC Doctor Service Center Drive Erase provides an easy, guided path to erasing hard drives. It automatically removes a freeze lock and erases hidden HPA and DCO sectors. And it uses the most secure erasure methods available for the drive. After it's done, it verifies that the erasure took place and presents a PDF certificate that's also stored on the drive. Drive Erase supports MMC partition regions, NVMe namespaces, and multiple drives in parallel. And there's no limit to how many drives it can be used with. If you're ready for an easy-to-use erasure solution, you should be using PC Doctor Drive Erase. Plus, we have something special for China Uncensored viewers. Get 10% off PC Doctor Drive Erase using coupon DE10OFF. Use the link in the description below to learn more. I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.